What is up, everybody? The History Guy here, coming at you with a first look at a new game that just went live on Steam today. I believe it's about $9, and it's a very unique take on the uh, events leading up to the American Civil War. This one's called Fort Sumter, this, The Secession Crisis. I have seen just a tiny, tiny bit of this game. Uh, but instead decided, uh, instead of looking at it and kind of learning the game and then coming to you with it after that, I thought I'd take my first look along with all of you, the viewers. So uh, we're going to take a look at this. It's kind of a card game. It, uh, it has a multiplayer mode that you can do. Uh, but we're going to do offline today, and we're going to play through the tutorial. So we're going to learn together and take a look at what Fort Sumter has to offer as a game. All right, here we go. So Fort Sumter is a two-player game pitting the Unionists against the Secessionists in three rounds of political maneuvering, culminating in a final crisis preceding the outbreak of the Civil War. Victory points are gained during each round and at the conclusion of the final crisis based on control of the various map spaces. The player with the most victory points has successfully galvanized their side for war and wins the game. For this tutorial, we're playing the Unionist side. My apologies to all of you Secessionists out there. And so we're going to dive in. Round one, Abraham Lincoln has been elected. Each round begins with, two, with the players being dealt four strategy cards and two objective cards. Of the objective cards, you pick one and put the card not chosen back into the deck. Take a look at any card. Try that now with the Fort Pickens card. All right, if played this card and control the Fort... If you played this card and control the Fort Pickens space... You may remove up to three tokens from armament spaces or remove up to one token from any space. All right, so we can implement that if we control Fort Pickens at the end of the turn. All right, Fort Pickens is right down here. It's in uh, it's right outside of Pensacola, Florida. I've actually been to the ruins of Fort Pickens there. Um, okay, so we're going to choose that objective because it aligns well with the strategy cards in my hand. Only three cards are played per round, so they are individually very critical to how things evolve. Click and drag Fort Pickens from your hand. So we're going to play it. My opponent has secretly selected one of their two objectives. It will be revealed at the end of the round. We now take turns playing three of the four strategy cards from our hand. Most victory points goes first. Unionist goes first because I'm tied. All right, so we've got Gustavus Fox. The upper left-hand number in each event card is that to card's token value. Color of the value box denotes which side has the option to play the event instead of taking the card's token value. If the color of the value in the box in the upper left card matches your faction, you can choose to play the event. All right, so it does. The upside down color band denotes this card's final crisis dimension location. You only use this color designation for the final crisis. Alright, there's a lot to take in for sure. Click on the card to dismiss it. Gustavus Fox is a unionist event, so you have a choice whether you use the strategy card for its two value that allows the placement of two tokens in any space on the map or play it for its event. Okay. So let's look at it again. In this case, the event will allow you to better set up your claim on your objective. So, all right. So we're gonna we're gonna drag that bad boy out here. We're gonna play the event. There are twelve spaces on the map. Each space can hold up to four of each of the player's tokens. They're like houses in Monopoly. Okay. A player controls a map space if they have more tokens on that space than the opponent does. Seems simple enough. The map spaces are divided into four crisis dimensions, each indicated by a color and icon combination. Secession, political armaments, and public opinion. All right, so there's a lot of depth here to this game. I can, I can see that already. Each, each dimension has three map spaces. So we can see the bell with the yellow here, Northern State Houses, Montgomery, Washington. Uh, we've got these three, we've got these three here, and these three. Okay, fair enough. Uh, a player controls a crisis dimension if they control all three of its spaces. Control of a crisis dimension is worth one victory point at the end of each round. Okay. Gustavus Vox event allows you to place up to three tokens on armament spaces. Okay, cool. 
When placing tokens on the map, the rule is that you must empty your off-map token pool before you can remove tokens from the map's crisis tracks, okay? At the beginning of every game, neither player has any tokens in their pool, so each player's first tokens come from the crisis track, starting from the highest numbered space, 15, to the lowest, 0. Place two, two tokens into Federal Arsenals. All right, the last token in Fort Pickens. So that gives me control of two of these, assuming he doesn't put anything into them. The three tokens you place came from the 15, 14, and 13 spaces on your crisis track. Yep, I can see that. Your opponent has played Republican Party from their hand as their first strategy card. That's interesting because the Republicans were unionists. So as a unionist event, hence it is not available to the secessionist player. Their only choice is to use the card for its value to place two tokens. Okay, that makes sense. You can also you can always place a card for its upper left value. Yeah, uh, if you gotcha. Either way, although none of this has been seen in the game yet, either player can use the event cards with half gray, half blue value boxes. All right. So he went for the newspapers. Opponent's token pool began the game empty, so the two tokens are removed from the Crisis Tracks 15 and 14 boxes. Now we can play a second strategy card. Let's try playing a card for its value. Virginia Waivers is a secession event, so we can't use the event. All we can do is use it for the value. It gives me two tokens on any spaces. These are still going to come from my Crisis. Uh, one in... Yep, one in Fort Sumter. So now we control all three of these. Second tone in fe Federal Arsenal, so there's no way he can outdo me on that one. That's pivotal because it's got the white thing around it. Each one's got a pivotal, I guess. Uh, each of the four Crisis Dimensions has a pivotal space. Yeah, and two associated. Each round after both players have made three strategy card plays... Each player controlling a pivotal space can move or remove up to two tokens across all spaces of that crisis dimension. That's cool. With this card play, you are aiming for control of the armaments dimension through control of the federal arsenals. Yep. He plays the Florida seeds, secedes for its event that will help them gain control over secession spaces. He plays two tokens on the border state space and one on the deep south. All three of these are in the secession track. You may play one more strategy card. The remaining card in your final card in your hand after that will be held for the final crisis. The two cards in your hand both have one value, so you could use either of them to help place one token on any space on the map. Both are unionists, so you could play either of them for the event to place three tokens. And yeah, well, that makes sense. Yeah, so Sam Houston, he was a unionist. A little kind of tidbit there: the hero of Texas. Uh, I believe, I mean, he was still alive when secession broke out. He may have been. I'm not sure if he was still a senator from Texas at that point or not, but I know he opposed secession. All right, so political dimension is still empty. Let's use the William Seward event tokens there. So we're going to play the event. Place all three tokens in Washington space. This will give you control of the pivotal space for the political dimension. All right. Crisis Track has three colored zones. Man, there's a lot to this game. I can see it's going to take a lot of playthroughs to kind of get the hang of this. The first of the three zones is the Escalation Zone, yellow, which gives two bonus tokens when breached. Man. The tokens you just placed on the map came from 10, 9, and 8 spaces on the cri Crisis Track. Yeah. After these tokens are moved to Washington, the Escalation Zone has been breached. So that's right here. Uh, we're moving our way toward the center, which I guess will be Final Crisis and a War. Uh, the two bonus tokens from the Escalation Zone are moved into your token pool. Woo! Cool. Secessionist player always gets the last strategy card play of the first round. Thereafter, the player with the most points goes first. Alright. You could use that. The value of the card to place one token into Fort Sumter in an attempt to deny me the armaments dimension. Yeah, but then I can move one, can't I? Yeah, because control of the pivotal space allows me to move a token over there to reestablish control, if that's what he does. Now, he went plantation class event to lock up secession dimension victory point. All right. 
Removing two or more tokens from the Secessionist Crisis Track has breached the Escalation Zone. So we've both done that now. The two bonus tokens are placed in the Secessionist tool or pool. Both players still have one strategy card left that will be set aside for now and held to the final crisis at the end of the game. All right. Man, there's a lot going on here. All strategy cards have been played for the round. It's time for the pivotal space actions. Scores tied. I make my pivotal space move first. Now, so I can move two tokens amongst the spaces in that crisis dimension or remove two tokens from that crisis dimension. This can affect either your tokens or your opponent's tokens. I control Washington. The only tokens in that crisis dimension are the three I have in Washington. So if I spread, yeah, okay, so he can't do anything in there. Uh, so then it makes sense for me to do that because he can't, there's nothing he can do to change that. I also control the arsenals. Yeah, it makes sense to move a token. All right, cool. I can move another one, but yeah, there's no reason to. Opponent controls the newspapers, pivotal space. They only have two tokens in that dimension, so they won't allow them to gain a victory point because they can't get the other two. All right. Your opponent also controls the border states. They have all three, so they choose not to make any changes. Okay. Crisis dimension. After pivotal space bonuses have been played, victory points are awarded for each crisis dimension. He gets one because he's got secession. But I get two. I get for all the political, but I also get for all the armament ones. Yes, sir. So far, so good. Then again, I have a, I'm have playing the tutorial, so obviously it's meant for me to win. After Crisis Dimensions are scored, the two secret objective cards are revealed. The player who controls either objective space gains one victory point. So I had Fict uh, Fort Pickens. He had newspapers, which he controls, so he gets a victory point. So it's three to two. You can implement the objective event on your secret card, but not your opponent's card, if you gain a victory point for it. The opponent can never use your event even if they win the victory point. So I can either remove three tokens from armaments or remove one token from any space. Alright, we're going to remove one from Texas. Get it out of there. Or I'll here remove two from Fort Sumter. Oh, ho, ho. That's the end of round one. Round two, the Buchanan lame duck session. All right. All right, round two. Now we go back and we do the same thing again. But now the state of the board will influence your decision. Since you control the political dimension, Northern State House is a better choice for objective this round. Uh, so that's, yeah, I can see that. Your, piv your opponent controls the pivotal space in the public opinion dimension, which will make it more difficult for you to be in control of the state assembly space at the end of the round. All right. So Northern State Houses, that's this one here. That's our objective. Players will again take turns playing three of the four strategy cards. I get to go first. Since he removed my Fort Sumter ones, I'm going to lose that if I don't get control of it again. Use the regular army event to regain control. I'm going to play the event. So I get three tokens for armament spaces again. Yep, let's defend that pivotal space. You had four tokens in your token pool. So three of them were used for this action, so that didn't move things up into the tension mode, I guess. Your opponent plays Louisiana Secedes. Dang, he's got that one locked up, but that's not a pivotal one. Second strategy, let's use Naval Relief to place a few more in the Armaments Dimension. Place two in Fort Pickens, one in Fort Sumter. So now I've got three in all of them. That's going to be tough for him to deal with. This action used the last token from your token pool and two tokens from seven and six. The Tension Zone has been breached. You receive three bonus tokens from the Tension Zone. So we move up. 
In addition, when a player breaches the tension zone for the first time in the game, the opponent is allowed to place the Peace Commissioner token on any map space. Alright, what's that mean? The Peace Commissioner prevents any tokens from being placed in or removed from that space. Alright. So he's protecting his newspapers. There are a few event cards that will allow the placement of the, police com uh, the Peace Commissioner, but you don't currently have one in your hand. So he's certain to control the newspaper space and the public opinion pivotal space at the end of the round. Yep. He's been split between those two. So he controls everything in that one right now. He doesn't control, he doesn't have Texas yet for this other one. So now he's breached the tension zone. Tension mounts. But he, but I did it first so I don't get to move the Peace Commissioner. All right, Calhoun's Legacy allowed me to place one token. Seizing Federal Armies allowed me to place up to four tokens. Well, that seems kind of obvious, does it not? If you place the four tokens within this event, you will take the token from five space on your crisis track. This will breach the final crisis zone. First player in the game to breach the final crisis zone receives four bonus tokens, but also loses a victory point. That's probably worth it. It's a steep price to pay, but it's probably worth it. Second player receives two bonus tokens, but there's no... Vi okay, so if they still receive two, maybe not. Seizing Federal Army Armories provides a strong event that you can take advantage of here. Before placing any tokens, you're able to remove up to four tokens from the map. So he only has one strategy card left to play this round. We can pick up a few of the excess tokens we placed into Armaments Dimension. Oh, there's a little typo there. Remove two tokens from Fort Pickens. All right. Remove one from Fort Sumter. That should be enough tokens in our token pool to keep us from breaching the final crisis zone until after your opponent does. All right, cool. I get that. Place up to four into secession or public opinion spaces. Your opponent's in a good position to control both of those dimensions. So let's try to prevent that. Yeah, Texas. Three into abolitionists, so we take that one over. All right, cool. Governor Pickens from their hand is the third strategy card of the round. He removed my Fort Sumter tokens. I should still be able to move something from the federal arsenals for that. Instead of going for the victory point from controlling secession, your opponent chose to remove your control of armaments, preventing you from gaining a victory point. Yep. All right, here's our pivotal space bonus. We can get it back. Oh, this is cool. This shows what we currently control of the pivotal spaces and of the victory points. I control the political dimension pivotal space, so I can move to two tokens. So we're not going to move... All right. Yeah, let's move one back to Fort Sumter. Your opponent used the first move from the secession dimension to remove my token from Texas. Ah, boo. All right, so now they got a victory point. So we're both going to get one, but I'll still be ahead by one. He used public opinion, or, uh, opinion to remove two of my abolitionist ones. Oh, man. Well, that actually kind of stinks. They weren't able to control that dimension during this round, but they're in a better position to do so in round three. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, here we go. Back to the crisis dimension. I think we're both going to get the same number of victory points here. Oh, no. I get two because he didn't control that one completely. I do control northern state houses. There's another victory point. Oh, six to four. Allows me to remove up to two tokens from political or public opinion spaces, yellow or green. Uh, yes. Thank you. Oh, I can remove one more. State assemblies. Yep. All right, that's the end of round two. 
All right, at the end of, e- of a round, if both players have breached the final crisis zone, the game skips the remaining rounds and goes straight to the final crisis. In this case, we proceed to round three. Lincoln and Davis. Round three is played in the same manner. The final crisis will be played at the end of the round, and the game will be over. So same thing as before. All right, we're going to drag Washington. That's our objective. If you played this card and control Washington, you may remove. Okay. You have three cards that you're, have your opponent's events, so you can only play them for value. Two of them only have a value of one, and both of those have the same final crisis dimension. Let's play how the low, play one of the low value cards, holding the higher value ones to respond to your opponent's actions later in the round. All right, Pensacola, that's only worth one. Reinforce our political dimension in Washington. Makes sense since that's our objective this round. Opponent plays PGT Beauregard from their hand. Oh, he got two points on Fort Sumter for that one. Interesting since Beauregard was in command of the uh, troops who fired on Fort Sumter. Peace Commissioner's event will allow you to move the Peace Commissioner token to either Washington or Fort Sumter. Uh, Yeah, so we're going to move him to Washington. So we're going to play that event. That's a gray or blue one. We're going to go protect Washington. Nice. Oh, boy. You have two secessionist events remaining. The one with the higher value also has the final crisis dimension that you have the least chance of impacting during a final crisis. So play Georgia Secedes. Two tokens in any space is not enough to control Fort Sumter, but you can equal your opponent there. All right, cool. Jefferson Davis. Oh, man, he just put two more on Fort Sumter. Use the value from Jefferson Davis to place two tokens in Fort Sumter and regain control of that space. The two tokens came from the six and five. Your opponent has breached the final crisis zone. He can ill afford those points, though, because I've got him by two right now. And then I get two bonus tokens, yes. All right. So nobody controls that last one. He's got two. All right, cool. You also control armaments. You can remove the two tokens your opponent just placed in Fort Sumter. Excellent. Oh, I got to do it this way. Gotcha. Just drag him over. All right. Your opponent receives one victory point for control of the secession dimension. I get one for political. So once again, we're even on those. We both got our objectives, I believe. Neither player controls that space, and so no victory point is gained. Like Northern State House's objective, the Washington one allows me to remove two tokens from political or public opinion. All right, we'll go after public opinion again. Here we go. Final crisis. Rules for Final Crisis are very simple. Each player secretly arranges their three-card Final Crisis deck in any order. Then both players simultaneously reveal one card at a time. Only information on the card that is used is the location color. Okay. Drag the Final Crisis card here to play first. All right. Sam Houston... And Calhoun's legacy. All right. Each player will get an effect based on whether the final crisis dimension location on the cards is a match. No match. 
When the crisis dimensions do not match, then each player, starting with the player with the higher score, can move up to two tokens from any map space and their token pool into any combination of this Final Crisis's card color. Since you have a higher score, you go first. I can move two tokens onto public opinion spaces. All right, on the newspapers. I got a bunch in the pool, so that's nice. Oh, he's going out to Fort Sumter again. No match again. Same thing. Everybody's fighting over Sumter. And then he went after newspapers again. Now this one's going to match. When they do match, each player must remove one of their own tokens from one of those colored spaces or remove two of their own tokens from any map space. Okay. Interesting. Excess tokens in the Federal Arsenal space. Okay. Final scoring. Obviously, we all know the outcome of this. We're going to win because it's the tutorial. All right, there we go. So I win 9-7. to seven. So there you have it. There's your first look. And obviously, you can go in. You can create a game. You can choose sides. You can go random sides. You can do human versus human. Uh, you can play online against one another. Uh, you can play against the computer. So uh, that's just kind of a first look at things. You can actually look at the card gallery here and see all of the different cards that are available and what they do to kind of learn the game a little better. Uh, so there's a lot there. Pretty neat game. It's very different, and I can see it'll take me several times playing on my own without a tutorial to guide me to start to get any sense of how this game's supposed to work. But it's cheap. It was like eight bucks on the on the uh, Steam store. Thought I'd give it a try. It looked interesting, and uh, so there you have it. First look at Fort Sumter: The Secession Crisis. New game just out today, May twenty first, twenty nineteen, in the Steam store. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more first looks like this, please let me know that. Please hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out some of my other videos. And we will be back again soon with more content. Thanks for watching.